All right, Shalom. Anybody on there? I can't tell. And I can't follow you on this. Oh yeah, there's, there's one brother. Or sister. Shalom. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to get right into it. Um, as soon as I figure out how to work this. Let's see here. Switch account. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so this title, the title of this lesson is going to be Hebrew Israelites. How do I repent? Okay. Give me a second here. Give me this. And we're gonna be getting right into it. You got a couple of other bro, uh, <clears throat> live streams going on right now. So those of you that's able to join <clears throat> the water, you know, brothers are just trying to do all they can do. Damn it. All right. Anyway, yeah, so this question that gets asked a lot so I figured I would go into a lesson about it. <clears throat> and just bring it out. So, Lord willing, this will be edifying. And you get something out of it. All right? I just try to do this. So, really, I'm just going to leave this thing alone. So, <clears throat> so how do you repent? And what it, what is that about? How you repent is, let me just answer the question first, and then we'll get scriptures to go, you know, to go into it. You repent by turning back to the most high. How do you turn back to the most high? You put off your own ways and you turn back to his ways. Now, normally we start with this, the laws, statutes, and commandments. When you wake up to the fact that you're a Hebrew Israelite, what you do is you, you pattern all your ways and actions after the ways and actions of the heavenly father and, the, and, and your forefathers in the past. Okay. So just let me, uh, get a couple of examples. First, we're going to go to Baruch chapter two. You know what? Before we get that, let's grab Isaiah 55. We'll go there. All right. Let's get Isaiah 55. I'm just going to read it right out of the Bible. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, go look it up on this thing right here. Hey, Shalom, brother. I'm not able to really track, you know, see how many people are on and whatnot. I mean, I can see, but it's not like normal. I don't have my other phone with me. I left it in the other car. But it's all good, though. All right, so I'm going to read this first. Let's get out of that. So we're going to go to Isaiah. Hold tight here. Um... Damn, I got a lot of windows open. All right. Let's get that blue letter Bible. And like I said, this is a lesson just through the spirit of just all of a sudden. You know, I was eating or whatever, and I was just meditating on what would be a good lesson. What would be a good lesson to bring out? <clears throat> and I said, hey, this, this is a question that a brother asked some time ago, you know, which this question, like I said, it gets asked a lot. And I don't, you know, being that I've been in the truth for a while, I don't know how people don't know how to repent. But then again, I mean, you know, we was there at a time our own selves. And now this thing I want to act right. All right, just hold on, y'all. Shit. Technology, man, screwing up. All right. <clears throat> Enough of that. I got it right here. So we're going to go to Isaiah 55. As I said before, you want to make sure that your ways pattern the heavenly fathers. You want to put off your sins, your iniquities, your deeds. You want to turn back to the heavenly father. And I'm going to read this scripture and I can get others that link up as well. So this is going to be Isaiah. We always love to read this when, when people ask or when we preach and repent to people. This is Isaiah 55 and verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. That's very key. You can't go by it any longer. Well, I think, I believe, I feel. You can't, you can't go by that anymore. You have to go into the scriptures and find out what the Most High says 
versus what the world says. For example, the holidays of the world, you know, you got to put those off. Christmas, Thanksgiving, you know, uh, you know, on and on. Valentine's Day, your own birthday. You got to put those off. And you got to turn back to the ways of the Heavenly Father and of your ancient heritage as Israelites. Isaiah 55 and 6, again, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him into our God for he will abundantly pardon. You see, you got to turn back to the ways of the Heavenly Father, not your own ways. He goes on, he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts, you see? So you got to realize the Heavenly Father's ways are higher than ours. The first thing you need to do is get out of your own way. You have to admit that you are, you know, you, to yourself, that you're a sinner and you need help. You see, you turn back to the ways of the Heavenly Father. Now, a good precept for that is Ecclesiasticus. And you have to, you can't come in thinking that you know something. You have to come in think, knowing that you don't know anything. For example, when you hear brothers go into the Apocrypha, this is important for new believers. Well, you haven't been reading from the Apocrypha. So you can't go, well, that, that book ain't in the Bible. You can't come with your opinions, with your attitudes. You got to put off all the shit you learned in the world that you thought you knew. And you got to come like a newborn babe. This is going to be Ecclesiasticus. It's a lot here. I could have just got it right here. Out of my raggedy old Apocrypha. And y'all just bear with me here. This is going to be Ecclesiasticus 17. Listen to what it says. And Ecclesiasticus is out of the Apocrypha, which is part of the Bible. I want to show this. Yeah. And I see Elder Kazak just went live. Elder Yashawama is also live with some brothers from Arkansas. And Mississippi. Okay, so this is the authentic 1611 King James Bible, which predates all those Bibles you buy in Walmart. Okay? The 1611 is the closest thing to the actual Hebrew. Now, when you go into it, you have the Old Testament. And between the Old Testament and the New, you have what's known as the Apocrypha. And it is a part of the Bible. And you will learn more about it as you go along. So if this was in the Bible before, the 1700s, and then the so-called white man Esau took it out. Should it not still be in the Bible? Yeah, it should be. So in that Bible, you have a book known as Ecclesiasticus, right? And it reads as follows. Ecclesiastes 17, verse 24, it says, But unto them that repent, he granted them return, and comforted those that failed in patience. Return unto the Lord, forsake thy sins, Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Turn again to the Most High, he says it again, and turn away from iniquity. Now, when you're dealing with iniquity, you may not know what that word means. But what is iniquity? Iniquity is sin upon sin upon sin. When you're a new believer, you may not even know what sin is. So let's find out what sin is. You have to know before you can say you will put off your sins. Well, what is a sin? Let's go ahead and grab it real quick. Because my dog on everything don't want to work right. iPad don't want to work. And I got this, this new Bible, so y'all bear with me here. Um, I got Bibles all over the house, actually. So this is going to be 1 John. Let's see if my brother put it up. I'll read it. But if I get to it before you, I'll, find, I'll, I'll read it from here. But if you put it up before me, I'll read yours. And I see you brothers got scriptures there, putting them up. But... Right now, I got to, you know, got to get the lesson, you know, get started in the lesson, and then I can go to the comment board. So here, can a brother put up 1 John 3 and 4? If you could put that up, that'd be great. Uh, Y'all know how the books get near the back. They get short and quick, right? That's James, Peter. All right, I got it. 1 John <laughs> 3 verse 4, it says, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So that's what sin is. See? So when you're going to repent and you want to quit sinning, you got to find out what are sins. You got to get into this book and read. Find out 
And, and let me read it again. First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Okay? So when you break a law in the Holy Bible, it's sin. That is committed sin. And when you continue to do it, sin after sin after sin after sin, it stacks up and it creates what's known as iniquity. All right? So let's go back to Ecclesiasticus. Salaki, y'all. Again, Ecclesiastes 17, 20, 26, it says, turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity. So you turn to the Lord, you put off your sins the best you can because we're rehearsing the righteous acts. If a brother want to put that up, you can put that up, rehearsing the righteous acts. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light and hate thou abomination vehemently. You're supposed to hate your evil ways, your evil deeds. So this is the beginning of repentance. And as you go on and on and grow more and more, as you put away your sins, then you, you, know, you get built up in the spirit. You see? And then you become a new creation. You put off the, old, the things of old. You put off that old man. And you put on a new man, right? Now, before we get that, I want to go ahead and give you an example. So we're going to go here. And just hold tight, brothers. Be patient. All right. Yeah, the picture looks. How's the sound? And how, how does it look? I believe it's looking good, but I just want to make sure. All right. So let's go over here. I got a few examples I like to read. Because you can look at the men of old that you're trying to be like. Okay, now this, this right here. All right, the water, the water brothers. And let's also get Judges, Judges 5 and 11 from uh, GMS Saints of the Most High. Judges 5 and 11. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts, Salakio, toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the, to the gates. And I'm going to tell you right away, and there's another excellent scripture we'll also read from the brother. When you come into the faith, you got to do a lot more listening than talking and asking a bunch of questions. Because when you ask a bunch of questions, Question, 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 question. If you if you just be quiet and, 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 and read and study and learn, take notes, you'll learn a lot more that way. Instead of why this and why that and why this and why because, you know, you're asking questions and it's, it's, just, it's just building up. And I'll explain more in a minute. Now, this is Ecclesiastes 44, verse 16. It says, Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated being an example of repentance to all generations. Now, Enoch was one of only two people that never died. So that's an excellent individual to pattern yourself after as much as you can learn about him, okay? And we're going to go into the scriptures and then we're going to also learn about, you know, when you go back into the past, you learn about Lot, uh, Noah, Enoch, Abraham, some of your forefathers. How did they live? How did they walk? Now it says again, Enoch pleased the Lord. And was translated. It means he was taken up into the heavens. Being an example of repentance to all generations. So he was that example of repentance. Right? Now I also want to grab here. In Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm going to start at verse 1. Well, you know, let's go to the point. Verse 5, it says, By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death. And was not found because the Most High had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased the Most High. See that? He pleased the Most High. And then when it says he walked with the Most High. um, Let's see here. Just hold tight. All right. So this is... Uh, Genesis 5, 24, it says, And Enoch walked with God, or the Most High, and he was not, for the Most High took him. Genesis 5, 22, And Enoch walked with the Most High after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Now, when you go into the phrase, walk with, let's just go there real quick. All right, it says, walked, halak, right? It says, to go, walk, come, 
right? Um, it says live, it says to die, but live manner of life. His manner of life was patterned after the Heavenly Father. Now, we go. it's got a lot of different uh, definitions, but I wanted to get here. It says, continually be conversant, exercise, follow forth, forward. You know, and it's got a lot of definitions to it, but we're going we gonna to also get another example. Um, so when you go into the scriptures, you see the Enoch walk with the Most High, and what it means is, he patterned his life after what the Most High said to do. Now, back then, the law was oral, and we all know that, okay? How else would Noah know uh, how many clean beasts and unclean beasts to take into the ark? And that may be a little, you know, a little high for some. I don't want to get, get brothers confused. So let's go back to Hebrews 11. And this is more of a lesson that's, that's patterned for new, the new believers and brothers, you know, new brothers and sisters. So again, Hebrews 11 and 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because the Most High had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased the Most High. But without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you got to have faith. And we know that as a Christian coming into the truth, waking up that you're an Israelite, you may have all these questions and start trying to act deep. Don't do that to yourself. We know that keeping the commandments is not going to save us. You're not going to be saved based upon how well you keep the commandments. But you show your faith by what? By your actions. And if your actions are patterned after the ways of the Heavenly Father, would that not please him? Sure it would. This is Revelation 14 and 12. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahweh Shai. So you do have to try to the best of your ability to keep the commandments, okay? Because, A, sin is transgression of the law. If you got to commit, if you got to stop committing sins or put away your sins in order to walk with the Most High or in order to repent, what are you going to do? You're going to stop sinning. So if you stop sinning, then what does that mean? You're going to stop breaking the commandments to the best of your ability. Now, I want to get, I got a couple of scriptures that I want to get. So in keeping with, let's go now to Baruch from the Apocrypha. And this is something else that's great to read when you, when you know, when you're waking up, when you woke up to the truth, because it gives you that basis for what you're to do as Israelites. So this is Baruch chapter two. And then we'll get another example. This is Baruch chapter 2, verse 29. And it says, If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the uh, small number among the nations where I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the lands of their captivities. They shall remember themselves. What is this talking about? You're going to be woke up to the truth. The Most High is going to, going to put the spirit on you to wake up to the fact that you're an Israelite. More than likely, you're going to see brothers preaching or you'll hear about it on the internet. You know, the word passed along to you and you're going to start to believe. You're going to be awakened. The Most High is going, going, going to breathe into you the breath of life, which is understanding. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people but in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves. You're going, hey, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm not black. I'm not a Latino. I'm not a Puerto Rican. I'm an Israelite from whatever perspective tribe, right? Then what do you do? And shall know that I am the Lord, their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. He's going to wake you up. He's going to give you the understanding. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. You're going, you know, that goes without saying we're still in captivity. And think upon my name. Then you're going to get the name of the Heavenly Father, obviously through the truth, right? And it goes on. It says, and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. How are you going to return from your stiff neck and wicked deeds? You're going to turn back to the ways of the Heavenly Father. You're going to stop celebrating the holidays of the world. You're going to become more and more like his son, right? Yahweh Shai, our Savior. You're going to become more and more like the men of the Lord. You're going to pattern your ways after Enoch. You're going to walk with the Most High. And then we're going to show you another excellent example. 
because it's got a great word in it. It says, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. You see? So you're going to remember the ways of our fathers. You can remember you were Hebrew Israelite, right? You're going to get the fringes, you know? And I don't want to push that, you know, because Jake always go, go crazy over damn fringes. Let me light this here ceremonial fire. This thing right here want to keep going out. This is a Palo Santo stick. Right? Very fragrant aroma. Likened it to an incense. You know. Anyway, so like the scriptures say, let me read that again. And I don't burn these all the time, but sometimes I will. I got to be in the mood. You know, I got incense as well, but you, you know. Some brothers got allergies, you know, like me, I got allergies, man, so I don't burn them as much. So it goes on, it says, In return from their stiff neck and their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers with sin before the Lord. So you're going to start keeping the Passover, you're going to keep the high holy days, you keep the law to the best of your ability, you're going to grow your beard if you're a man, if you're a sister, you know, you're going to, you know, explore other ideas and things that go inconsistent with women, right? That's what you're going to do. You're going to come among the brotherhood, you're going to try to join the camp, start teaching, but you know, you got to go slow in the beginning. Okay? So that's what you, you're to do. You're to remember the ways of your fathers. As a matter of fact, let's see if I can get this. Uh, if I remember where it's at. This is going to be just hold tight. Patience, patience. Alright, this is the book of Job chapter 8. And a lot of scripts have been coming to me, but I, I'm going to lose some of them. But Lord willing, I can remember. So this is uh, Book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. It says, For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. You got to go back to what your fathers did, right? You got to go back to your ancient heritage, to, their, to the ways of our fathers. Now I want to also go here. And that was just a quick precept. Let's go and grab... We're going to read 2 Peter. I got that pulled up. So this is, we're going to read about Lot because we know that Lot, when you look at Enoch, Enoch was translated, he never died. But what about Lot? The nephew of Abraham, he was delivered from the five cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah that were burning, right? The Most High saved him. <coughs> Excuse me. 2 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to jump in here at verse 5. I'm going to start. I'm just going to read verse 4. It says, For the Most High spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness, excuse me, to be reserved in the judgment. And that's us now. We're in hell, right? We're in the conditions, excuse me, of hell in these, in these uh, in sinful flesh. These, these bodies are chains of darkness. You lose hair, you lose teeth, you get a pot belly. You know, you start to, uh, uh, you know, you, you lose. The older you get, the more you start to lose. Then you lose your, your sight gets dim. The older you get, you know, you get slower. These bodies, man, sinful flesh, things that you want to do, you won't do. Things you don't want to do, you wind up doing. You see? And we're reserved until the day that the Yahweh Shah comes back, which is going to be the judgment. Now it goes on in verse 5. It says, it spared not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. You can always find little extra things in the scriptures, man. Tidbits. Noah, we know, was a preacher of righteousness. Now, when you read in the Old Testament, it don't say, then Noah went out and preached. It don't say it like that. But we know that Noah preached. He was a preacher of righteousness, as it says here. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So we know that preaching is a righteous thing. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And what's the opposite? What's ungodly? Un, the word un means without. So if you're living ungodly, you're living without the most high. You're living like a beast, right? You, you're doing after your own ways. You're just doing whatever you want to do. That's ungodliness, man. You know, committing sins. That's ungodliness. So the Most High left Sodom and Gomorrah as an example. It says, 
and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow was burned up. Oh, those five cities were burned up, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. You look at Sodom and Gomorrah and that example, those that got swallowed up in the flood and other various destructions and judgments around the world, around the, you know, uh, throughout time, should I say, all around the world. And those are memorials for those that are living ungodly. In every instance where you had people get saved, you had many got destroyed, way more. An example of Noah, eight souls were saved, everybody else drowned in the flood. In an example of uh, Lot, Lot and his daughters escaped, Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt, the, the, his sons-in-law, they were destroyed along with the five cities because they were wicked, they were ungodly. Now listen to this. It says, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Now there's a key word, just. Not as in only Lot, but just as in just as compared to wicked. Uh, Lot was called a just man. We're going to look the word up. And I'm going to actually play the sound too. We can look the word up. And this will give you a lot of insight on what it is about repentance. Because it's going to tell you. So if Lot was, if Enoch was translated because he was an excellent example of repentance, we want to do after his ways. Why did it say, right? It said he walked with the Most High. Here it says Lot was a just man before the Most High. We know that he was saved. Strong's G, 1342. Dikaios. Dikaios. All right, so Dikaios for the word just. Listen, it's got a lot to it. It's got all kind of, a whole lot of definition, but we're going to read this. This gives you an example of repentance. It says, righteous, just, right, meet. Remember when John the Baptist preached, he said, bring forth, therefore, uh, fruits, meat for repentance, right? Listen, righteous, observing divine laws. Who's the divine? The heavenly father and his son, Yahweh Shai. Observing divine laws in a wide sense, upright, righteous, virtuous, keeping the commands of the most high. So when you repent, what do you do? You want to be like Lot. You want to be like Enoch, right? You want to be like Noah. You want to be found faithful in the Most High's eyes. So you're going to do what? In a wide sense, upright, righteous, virtuous, keeping the commands of the Most High. It says, innocent, guiltless, faultless. Woo. Use of him in whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is wholly conformed to the will of the Most High, and who therefore needs no rectification in the heart of, or life. Woo. You got to understand that. So why was, why was Lot saved out of Sodom and Gomorrah? Because he was a just man. He was innocent, faultless, guiltless. You see? He was virtuous, righteous, upright, keeping the commands of the Most High. Hmm. I'm going to read it again. It says, use of him whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is wholly conformed to the will of the Most High and who therefore needs no rectification in the heart or life. That's fire. And it also gives the uh, word equitable, innocent, holy, which holy is set aside, set apart, separate from everybody else. You walk a different path. Now, when you go to that word conformed, right, holy conformed, let's look that up. Define conformed. They don't want to give it to me. If a brother can put up, I don't know why I won't give it to you. And you know what? Never mind. I go over here, bring it up in Google, and, I, and I'll look it up that way. So you got to see, Lot was righteous. Enoch was righteous. Noah was, found, well, they were found righteous before the Most High. And what, and what happened to them? They were delivered from their particular, Enoch was translated, taken into the heavens. Noah was saved from the flood. Enoch was saved from the five cities, burning. All right, so I'm going to look this up. Here it is. Conform. So when you look at the word conform, it says comply with rules. That's heavy. I love it. Comply with rules, standards, or laws. When you comply, what do you do? You obey. You do what was, what was told. The word conform, comply with rules, 
standards or laws. Then it gives you an example. It says, the kitchen does not conform to hygiene regulations. Here's some similar words. Obey, observe, follow, keep to, hold to, satisfy, match up to, meet, fulfill, stick to, stand by, uphold, heed, accept, go along with, fall in line with, acknowledge, respect. You do all those things to the laws of the Heavenly Father. And the opposite of that is flout. When you flout something, flout. Openly disregard a rule, law, or convention. You don't want to do that. You don't want to openly disregard. You're, then you're a sinner. And the Most High hates sinners. We know that. Let's get another definition. It says, of a person behave according to socially acceptable com conventions or standards. Similar words, fit in, adapt. Another definition, be similar in form or type. Agree, this is how you conform to the ways of the Lord. Be similar in form or type, agree. See? Similar words, match, fit, suit, answer. These are similar words for conform. You want to conform to the ways of the Heavenly Father, man. You want to pattern your ways after, after him, and after the, or after his ways, after his ways, and the men that were before you, as the brother put the scripture up, and I saw it, I didn't get a chance to read it, but let me see if I can get it here. This thing is very sensitive. This uh, stand. All right. This is a uh, lot of great stuff on the comment board, brothers. So this is a uh, Harakar Shala War Romans fifteen and four. For whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we look back on the, on our, on the, the men of old. Those that were deemed as righteous. You see? We look back on the men of old. We want to pattern ourselves after their ways. You know? Now, brothers had excellent scriptures there on the comment board. I may have, may have to go back and get some more of them. I wanted to get that. Let's get here. And, um, and then, look. YouTube was hiding a lot of the scriptures down. Because they, they wasn't showing up. Okay. I was wrong on that. They was showing up. It just, this new phone is a little different. And what did I want to get? Uh, I drew a blank. Dog on it. It'll come back. Lord willing, it'll come back, you know. So that's, in a nutshell, you repent by doing what? Turning back to the ways of the Lord, man. Well, that's not a nutshell. That is it. You turn back to the ways of the Father. As a matter of fact, now, that fan blowing. Let's get Matthew chapter 19, what Yahweh Shah said. This is how you live forever right here. Yeah, this is fire. Shah Yasharala, Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. That's right, you know? That's right. And another scripture says, miss not the discourse of the wise. Miss not the discourse of the elders. You got to listen to the brothers, the men that were set up above you. You got to fall in line, be in order, and conform, for goodness sake. Let's also grab... Conform to the ways of the Father is what I'm speaking of. Um, man, I'm saying the scriptures and I'm forgetting them as soon as I say them too. Doggone it. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. So this is uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 8. In verse 8, it says, Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. You learn it by watching the brothers. Men, you, as the scriptures say, mark the perfect man. You got to see which men are living the right way. Hey, first and foremost in the scriptures, right? It's fire. That's fire. Immutable descriptions. Y'all just be patient with me. 
Jeremiah 6 and 16, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the, in the ways and see, ask for the old paths, where is the good way and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk therein. <laughs> Fire, the water. Ecclesiasticus chapter 8 and verse 9. And I'm going to go back to verse 8. It says, despise not the discourse of the wise. Discourse is a conversation. Be acquainted, uh, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs, like in the Bible, proverbs, right? For of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. Verse 9, miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learn of their fathers, and of them thou shalt learn understanding, and to give answer as need requireth. And when you're doing these things, talk about keeping the laws, you're being converted, you're doing all that, you're being born again. That's what you're doing, because Jake, you know, people coming from the church, well, it must be born. You think that if you get dipped in water, then suddenly you born again. You think if somebody pour water on you, when you come up out of the water blinking and doing all that coughing, now suddenly you born again. That don't make you born again. That's just water. The real, the real baptism is getting washed with the water of the word. Right? Matter of fact, man, everything leads you to another script. Let's go to Psalms. And I appreciate you brothers posting the scriptures. Even if I don't read it, I'm going to try to read them, you know, but sometimes I get caught up in the moment. Psalms 119 and 9. And it reads, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse, cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. You want to clean your life up? You do it according to the word, with the most High's word. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. I got to get another here. This is uh, John first 15 and 3. This is John 15 verse 3. Now are ye clean through getting dipped in the baptism pool from saying Hail Marys and doing this shit, throwing salt over your shoulders, spinning around in a circle? No. Now are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you? That's how you get clean, through the word. Right? You get clean through this word. As John the Baptist said, he will baptize you with fire. You know? Let me see here. He said baptize you with fire and with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, <laughs> for you church followers, the Holy Spirit is not the thing that make you fall out in church and flipping and flopping all over like a fish, going hobo, bo, co, co, show, 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 foaming at the damn mouth. We call those are demons that make you do that. A demoniac is the one that falls down in the church, spazzing, doing all that. Because the Most High says, let all things be done decently and in order. And seeing the same old lady every week fall out on the ground, People, everybody get around and form a circle, keep them from hurting their dumb self or bumping their head on the ground. That's not order. That's confusion. That's chaos. This is Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, if you by chance were to get baptized, technically there's nothing wrong with that, which when you come into the truth, you ain't going to really do that because that's, that's, a, that's the thing of the world, man. But if you say, I'm following the example of John the Baptist, he baptized people, okay, fine. But if you get dipped in water and then you go and you eat pork or you, you know, uh, cuss out your parents, right? Or do some other, if you become a faggot or a lesbian, if you're a woman, if you get dipped in the water, then what, is that, what does that washing do? It didn't do anything. So your repentance is based upon what's written in the word. You're being washed is based upon what's written in the word. Matter of fact, um, ooh, scripture's just coming. Come on. <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna get back to you brothers on the comment board. Damn it. Can a brother, it's a scripture. A brother might get it. Uh, his, hold on, let me see if I can get it here. 
This is a far, this is a great one, but it's not what I wanted. What the scripture says, what availeth his washing? This is Titus 3. This is fire. Titus 3 and verse 1. The heading says, Godly living. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities. Woo killing it. Y'all killing it. So this is a uh, Jim has saints of the most high, Jeremiah 2.22. For though thou, for though thou wash thee with nitri, a niter, a nitri, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, said the Lord Power. Look at that. Soap and water can't get sins off of you, man. You gotta repent. You gotta start doing the works that bring forth life, not the works that bring forth death. That's it, brother the water. Brother I'm Raya, Ecclesiastes 34:25. He that washes himself. After the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? Woo! If you're going to say you clean and then you go and you wallow right around in the dirt, fall all over the ground, what's the point of washing up? See? And, and, and oh, if that brother could put it the next verse too, I think the next verse goes with it. And I'll read them together if I can get to it. Yeah. That's, uh, and that was why I wanted to go there too. GMS, Amathia Eyes. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. When you sanctify, what are you doing? You're being purified. You're being cleansed. Yeah, that's it. That's it, brother. But so, brother, I'm Raya again. Hold tight. Damn it. Ecclesiastes 34, 25. He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? Verse 26. So is it with a man that fasteth for his sins and goeth again and doeth the same. Who will hear his prayer? Or what does his humbling profit him? You got to change your ways. You can't be the same wicked ass nigga. You got to change your ways. You got to bring forth wholesale change in your life. And the most high knows. And those that are around you that know by looking and seeing, we know if you change or not. For example, if you say you repented, right? Why are you going to the weed man? That's the old you. You don't go to the weed man no more. You don't deal with that. Now you got to, everybody coming into the truth got some bad habits and you got to put them off, but you have to work at it. You have to pray fast. Some are harder to get over than others. Okay? Cigarettes is a big one. Cigarettes, black and miles, all that. And we've seen it. We, we, we know about it. Now when it comes to something like alcohol, you can still drink. We know that the Baptist church, these different churches tell you that you don't pose a drink, you know, but you can drink in moderation. Anything that you do that the Most High says you can do, you do it in moderation. You can't become a wine, uh, uh, a wino in our times. We say wino or bum or drunkard, ball out in public, falling all down, you know, in front of people doing like that. You can't be known as the town drunk. You got to put that aside. So again, godly living, Titus 3 and 1, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey majesties, to be ready to every good work. And that's another thing. You become a better individual. You become a man. You got to man up. You can't be being a damn hypocrite. You can't be saying, you know, looking at other people saying things, but then you ain't working on yourself. You have to work on yourself and you become accountable. You become responsible. Then the most high teach you judgment. Just like we can see with these cop shoes, we can see these niggas is getting shot down because why? They're not accountable. They're being wicked. They're being demons. They're going against the authority that's set up. Even though you may not like the authority that's over you, you do have to admit and realize that the Heavenly Father put them in power, right? So therefore, you're going to follow what's laid before you. You're going to follow what the Most High says. This will keep you safe. This will keep you alive right here. It says to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, be gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Now hold right there. We ain't faggot Christians. That don't mean you let people walk over you. That don't mean that you uh, uh, always taking the, you got to always take the low. That you got to just be damn gullible, let people beat you out of money, stuff like that. That ain't what it's talking about. It's saying when you deal with those that's like you, you be gentle, even in your regular life. As the scriptures say, a soft answer turneth away wrath. You see? If you blow on the spark, you're going to make it increase. But if you spit on it, you put it out. 
basically, you know, paraphrasing that. So if you see a situation can get hot, you got to be the one with the cooler head because the scriptures say what? Um, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeem, you know, like that. So when you see somebody that ain't got the wisdom, you got to say, man, you know, this, I don't have time for this. That's that worldly shit. I ain't dealing with it. It goes on, it says, to speak evil of no man, to be brawlers, be uh, to be no brawlers, but gentle. What's a brawler? You're fighting and shit. Showing all meekness unto all men, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. As we always constantly have to say, we don't hate no brothers, man. Even from the other camps. We wish you get right. We hate your ways, but deep down we don't really we don't hate you. Even though the scriptures call us and tell us that we have to rebuke. Rebuke is part of love, man. It saved your life. It says, but after the kindness and love of the Most High, our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. It's through grace that you receive faith. Right? It ain't got really it's got nothing to do with us. But it goes like this. The most I had those that he chose that he's going to save. And if you wanted the most highs, he put that in you to be patterned after his son. Let's go to Romans. I got to read it. One of my favorites. Romans 8. And you're going to hear that word. That, that beautiful word, conform. Sometimes it's a beautiful word. We're going to show you the, we're going to show you uh, the opposite of conform, what you don't want to conform to. So this is Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. For what? To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And we can get conformed here in the scriptures now. Here's the word. <clears throat> Strong's G 4832. Sumarfas. 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 It says, conform to, fashion like unto, having the same form as another, similar, conformed to, jointly formed, fashion. Yeah, it gives the same words. It's like we look the word up. So going back, the Lord said He's going to give you the spirit and the power that you're going to be like His Son. Who did what? Knew no sin. Now, we can't be perfect on this side because we're not, uh, you know, we ain't liking unto him yet, but we're going to be changed into that perfection. But as we go on along in our walk, you get stronger and stronger, walking in his ways. <clears throat> Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, on top of that, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Did he call you to preach? And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Mm. What shall we then say to these things? If the Most High be for us, who can be against us? So nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop you from walking after the Savior. If you get destroyed, if you do a bunch of iniquity and sins, guess what? More than likely, the Lord didn't choose your ass. You got to be honest in this walk. Let's go real quick to Matthew 19. Just to get a straightforward example. Somebody asked the Lord a question. And this is what he said. Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is the most high. And the man said, Well, what can I do to get eternal life? How can I live forever? 
And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is the most high. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which? Yahweh shall say, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy mother and thy father, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He told him that. He said straightforward, the commandments. Keep the law. Now we're going to go back to Romans, because I, I just remembered I want to get that, the parallel. So when you read Romans 8 and 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, right? Okay, so you want to be conformed to the image of his son. But what's the opposite of that? I'm going to show you. A brother put it up just a minute ago on the comment board, if I can find it. And that predestination, that's fire too, Salakia. I knew that was going to happen. That's why I was trying to be delicate with it. This thing right here, man. It's, it's the wife's. All right. Damn it. It's kind of crooked, but we'll suffer with it. So I want to go back and get this scripture that the brother put up. All right. Jim and Saints of the Most High. It says thus, Romans 12 and 2, and be not conformed to the to this world, so like it, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that we that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high. Matter of fact, I should have went and brought it up in this, so that way we can look those words up. Let's do that. That's always gonna give us something good. This is Romans 12. But the water for the scripture, though, bro, I was trying to read some of, you know, some of your brother's scriptures, and y'all got the renewing, you know, to be renewed. That's what you got to do. You got to be a new creation. You got to be a new creature. Because that's what implementing the ways of the Heavenly Father is going to make you into a new individual. When you go around your family, wicked-ass niggas from the world, they're going to notice, man, this nigga different now, man. Like, we always make the joke about it, man. I try to pass this nigga the blunt. He won't hit it. You know, his baby mama came around. She got this nigga, this nigga whack, man. Your baby mama been asking about you, man. Fuck her. She got a dude already. You can't be messing with other men's women. Can't do it. That's the old you. You don't do that no more, man. Right? You don't creep in that way. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So while the sacrifice was done away with as far as us sacrificing for our sins, we become a daily sacrifice. We live in sacrifice. We put aside deeds of the flesh. You sacrifice your money, your time, your effort, your energy. Instead of doing things that the world is doing, you're doing what the Lord said do, right? On Saturday, Saturday is the, way, is the day of the world, man. Everybody, oh, it's Saturday. We're going to go out. We're going to shop. We're going to do this. What you doing on Saturdays? You at camp teaching with the brothers. You're making a lesson. It's Friday evening. People is out right now partying. What we doing? We in church. As it were, we in church. Verse 2 is the kicker. And be not conformed to this world. You ain't like the people of the world. You can't be like them anymore. You got to turn away. You got to do things differently. They're living after their own lust, desires. They're living after the ways of the world. The world celebrating Christmas. The world go to church on Sunday, on Saturday. The world keep the Sabbath Friday sundown to Saturday sundown when it's not the new moon during that time. That's what the world does. The fake Jews do that. And they, root, they run the world. That's what they do. When you were a brother or sister that's repented and you converted, you came into the truth, what are you doing? You're trying to find out the right way to keep the Sabbath, it's, which is according to the new moon. Watch everybody, watch motherfuckers start passing out. <laughs> Who you be, brother? <laughs> We've been, we've been making lessons about it. Why you don't know? Image. Got it, brother. Hey, the water. Shalom, Elder Yatazan. He said, look up image in that verse. Hey, let's go to it. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Now, I don't see image there. Hold up.
It's going to be transformed into another value too. I don't see image there. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, Romans 8. Romans 8. Let's go back to it. That's got an image in it. Romans 8. And we'll come right back to that. Let's go there now. Since the elder said we should look that up. Yeah, man. I know that's fire. So back in Romans 8, 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. There it is. There it is. To the image. This is the word. Strong's G, 1504, icon. Icon. Which sounds like, it sounds like icon a little bit, but it says icon, right? It says an image, figure, likeness, an image of things, of the heavenly things, ooh, used of the moral likeness of renewed men of the most high. Woo, fire, fire. He said a verse up. Okay, we'll go up a verse. But that's fire though. It says used of the moral likeness of renewed men of the most high. That's fire. You heard that? I'm gonna read it again. Used of moral likeness of renewed men of the most high. That's fire. That's beautiful. The image of the son of the most high into which true, they say Christians, true Israelites are transformed is likeness not only to the heavenly body, but also to the most holy and blessed state of mind which Hamashiach possesses. The image of one, one in whom the likeness is of anyone is seen applied to man on account of his power of command which that's going into you know oh here's, here's a great one to Hamashiach on account of his divine nature and absolute moral excellence you got to start having you're going to have better morals a likeness statue well that's that's dealing with statue you know dealing with that kind of image now let's go back because the elder said a verse up. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the most high. Oh, he said, oh, that was it, 29. Okay, cool. That was fire. That's excellent. But see, you want to be conformed to that image. Now back in Romans 12, going back there, let's read that again. And I mean, pretty much the point is made. Okay, he said verse 29 is the point. That's fire. Excellent. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Let's look up transformed. And we know what it means, but... So you're going to be... Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. This is the word Transformed. Strong's G, 3339, Metamorpho. 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 Now, if you think back to the old Incredible Hulk series, they said what? When he got hit with the gamma rays, he went through what was called metamorphosis, and he changed from David Banner or Bruce Banner to the Incredible Hulk, right? So we're going to be, we're going to go through, we're going to, it says here, transfigure, transform, change. To change into another form. So you don't want to conform to the world, but you want to conform to the ways, to Yahweh Shai's ways, to his image, right? To his moral excellence. And you want to be transformed, change into another form to transform, to transfigure. So you want your ways, you want to become a new creation. Let's go there. Before we go there. And be not conformed to this world, but, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind got to be renewed. Brain, you got to be brainwashed. You brainwashed hanging around the Israelites. You damn right. We are brainwashed. Our brain has been cleansed to a certain extent. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Now let's get it. New. Hold up, hold up. New creature. This is 2 Corinthians 5, and I'm going to go to verse 16. 
Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yet though we have known Hamashiach after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's how you can be a virgin. You're, you're virgins, you know? Yeah, you got defiled with the religions of the world, right? With the, uh, the daughters of a strange God, as it were. You might have been a Baptist, a Catholic, a Muslim, uh, you know, a seven-day Adventist, a Jehovah's Witness, or just a nigga in the world. But now you get cleansed. You born again and you become a virgin. You're a new creation. You're one of the wise virgins, right? It says, therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See it? Born again. This is Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But the Most High forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord, Yahweh Shah of Mashiach, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of the Most High. You got to be a new creation. For example, you can't come into this truth thinking you can bring shit from the world and make it the Hebrew Israelite version of it. You was a grungy ass rapper in the world. Now I'm, I'm going to take my, my talent into and music, I'm going to flip it. I'm a, I'm a Hebrew Israelite rapper. No, don't work. Doesn't work. If you, Now, if you make songs on the side, whatever, brothers rap and do all that, but you can't, it's not part of the truth. It's not part of the ministry. It's not considered doing the work. I make songs for the Lord now. I mean, I spit fire for the Lord now. <laughs> if you spit fire for the Lord, it better come out of this book. This is the song right here. There's a whole song book filled with songs of spit. If you, you know, put it on that level. That little whack, whack ass Hebrew Israelite. See, I'm a Hebrew Israelite rapper. Uh huh. Yep. But no. Let's get this. And, you, and as you can see, the Most High is not pleased with rappers. What is he doing? Over 200 rappers died in 2020. Already what? Now we've said 10 already, but shit, since then, yeah, DMX, Black Rob, and Shock G died. Shock G. That's not a, that's not a lifestyle that the Most High appreciates. Okay? Well, King David wrote the Psalms song. That was number of raps. No, it wasn't. The Psalms, you read it. It doesn't rap. It doesn't rhyme. For the most part, there's some some things in the Bible that rhyme, but it wasn't it wasn't meant to be like that, man. Let's see what's the scripture. Ephesians four, and y'all got ex excellent stuff, excellent stuff, beautiful. This is Ephesians four. It's a lot too. I'm just going to go to the point. Excellent chapter to read. Ephesians four. 21, verse 20. But ye have not so learned Hamashiach. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yehoshah, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. You got to put the old guy off. Cigarette behind your ear, pants hanging low. When that nigga leave, I'm going to get that. He just got a new plasma. He just got a new 70 inch. Me and my boy Ray Ray, we're going to get that shit. Don't know about it, snitch. Snitches get, snitches get stitches. <laughs> you know, all that. That ain't you no more, man. If it's not yours, don't touch it. Right? If it's not yours, don't touch it. Yeah, how about Shimmy Howard Shah Barakatha? Barakatha, brother. He said Barakatha is Barakatha for me, from me to you. If so, uh, they said that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. That's not all. 
You put off the old man, but what else? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Sin starts up here. Let's get it real quick. Oh, just be patient. These things don't always act right for Yeah. Oh boy. I, I see now why I stopped using this thing. Because the phone is easy, but I don't have it. It's in the other car. Like I said, it's in the car with the wife. James 1 and 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the most high. Because he got Satan to do that. That's why he's known as the tempter. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the most high. For the most high cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Satan whisper in your ear. Yeah, don't that she look good, right? Your baby mama missed you. She was yours before she was his. So technically, she was your, she your wife. Take her back. <laughs> Start telling you, yeah, you remember I used to hit that? Nah, man. If another man come into that woman, she ain't yours no more. You can't go back. Even if you used to be with her. Even if you got children by her. Even if you was the first person that ever slept with her. In reality, let's say you meet a virgin. You be with a virgin. She yours. That's your wife, right? Even if she acknowledged the truth. And then you, she go and she be with another dude. Then they be together. Then you moved on with your life. Then you run into her. She want to get back together. You don't supposed to take that woman back, man. You're not supposed to take her back. At the end of the day, that's between you and the Lord. But you're going off if you took her back, man. Bottom line. Now, it's different. That, you know what? Hmm. I ain't going to go there. Don't take the woman back, man. If she, expect, well, if she got another dude, then you're going to be committing adultery anyway. Let's read this again. Because just when you say something, Jake will take that shit and, and make a thousand questions out of it. A thousand questions. And I ain't going to answer none of them. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the most high. For the most high cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So it starts in your mind. You start thinking about it. Then after a while, you try to figure out ways you can get away with it. Then you do it. When you put your hand to it and you do it, then it's a sin. Now you done, you done, you done messed up. See? So all that shit about it just happened. I was over there. See, she was looking good. She was smelling good. I was standing by the window first. Then she walked by me. Then she had brushed my arm. Then I, then I got hard. I couldn't stop. You know, no, no. What happened when you knew she had a dude and you had to drive your ass across town to go be where she is? You had to go put gas in the car because you was on E before you drove across town to see her and you knew she had a dude. Can't get out of it. Don't do it. Ephesians 4, again, 422. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Right. <laughs> and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. She did. She, she reached out and grabbed it, bro. I couldn't do it. I was froze. <laughs> you going to touch it or not? Oh, uh, no. Nah. You should have never been over there to begin with. It would never happen. Women love to come around and entice men that they used to have, man. They love to do that shit. They walk by the camp and look at us and say stuff and do things. Don't do it, bro. Don't do it to yourself. The most I got women on deck, man. <laughs> you know how women, man, you, hey, the, trust me, bro. When I came into the truth, I was naive when it came to women. But I learned a lot. And I learned from the apostles, elders, and brothers. And everything the apostles say about women, man. Most of that stuff be true. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. I done seen when women will pretend they in the truth with you while they with you. But the minute they get interested in something else, they will drop your ass like a bad habit, man. I done seen women, man. Women coming up to the camp with, with garments on. <laughs> with brothers that was in the camp. They brought their girlfriend and rebuke guy. Man, what the fuck what y'all doing, man? He brought the girl to the camp. She had a garment on and came to the camp. Where is she today? Back in the world, man. She's back in the world. With different dudes. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. And not every case, but a lot most most of the time.
So back in Ephesians 4.22, it says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You got to be renewed, man. Yep. You got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renewed. What's renewed? You can turn that off if you want to. And, and we're going to look the word up in a minute. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. So you put off the world and conform to the ways of the most high and you become a new man. It says, and that you put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness. Where's the righteousness found? What's in this book? Well, I didn't want to use it as occasion to bash. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? There are situations, there are instances where, you know, you got some true believers. I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about, you know, <laughs> let it apply to who it applies to. And that you put on a new man which is created, which, which after the Most High is created in true righteousness. I'm sorry. Which after the Most High is created in righteousness and true holiness. Listen to this. Wherefore, putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. You can't be that dude to tell lies, man. If you in the truth, you a brother in the truth. If you tell me something, I should be able to believe what you're saying, man. I shouldn't have no doubts about what you're telling me. Even if we got, even if we share a portion of our life that's outside of the truth, you can't be being a lying ass nigga, man. You just can't do that. It's still committing sins. You gotta be forthcoming, honest, and truthful. I hate a fucking liar, man. Period. I hate a lying ass nigga. And that's, you can always, if a guy say, he, guy could be a powerful teacher, make videos, do all these things, but if he tell lies on a consistent basis, you know that dude might not be right, man. That's revealing. Lies reveal people, man. Lies reveal guys. Now let's go back. In verse 23, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, right? Let's look at renewed. And the point is made. Strong's G365. Ananao. 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 Babe. Yeah. My, um, my other phone in the car. Can you get it? Please. Ananao. To renew in the mind. To renovate. Renovate. You got an old abandoned house. It's broke down. You bought, you bought it and you renovate it. Now you fix it up. Now you rented it out. Right? Renovate. Renovate. This, this house is renovated. It says to renovate, i.e. reform, renew. Let's look up renovate. Let's see if we can get anything. I'm sorry to make you do that. You want respect, you got to give it, right? And it's, and it's nothing wrong, brothers. If you, you know, you be nice, this, that, and other, man. Nothing wrong, having respect, right? Okay, renovate. Doggone it. And I'm, and I'm, and when I, and I wanted her to get the phone so I can get to it and I can read some of y'all brothers, because I'm gonna go back through the comment board and read some of y'all scriptures, because I know there's some fire on there. Cause I'm pretty much, I pretty much said what I wanted to say, but I wanted to share with the brotherhood. I want to get some of those excellent scripts y'all got. Oh man, this thing right here get on my nerves. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can get it over here. I'm trying to define. That's fire. Jim and saints of the most high, Romans 13, 13. This is fire. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Absolutely. And it says that you what? Oh man, this thing. It said, let us walk honestly. When you walk it honestly, you ain't telling no bunch of lies, man. Right? Thank you. 
Appreciate it. There we go. Okay. Now I can get to that comment board. Just hold on. Okay, so renovate. We'll go ahead and read it off, out of, off of this. Renovate. Right? It says restore something old, especially a building, to a good state or repair. So you want to, as the Most High said in uh, Isaiah chapter 1, he said he going to restore it. We got, we got to go there and get it. Right? Yeah, renovate. Okay. So let's go. Isaiah 1. Oh, go on. Y'all just hold tight here. Okay, Isaiah. So what you're doing is you're trying to go back to the old state when we were in our excellence. Even though you're a new man, you want to go, you want your ways to be patterned like the men of old. If you were in fact one of the prophets of old, you was a man of the Lord, you're trying to go back to that. You're trying to go back to that likeness. Because in this likeness, you just been Fred or Joe, you know, Donnie or whatever your name, you know, whatever your name in the world is, right? Andre. You ain't trying to be him. You're trying to be Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. That's who you're trying to be. Okay. So now. Go here. And I'm going to go to, to the comment board, but I got to get this scripture. This is Isaiah 1, verse 16. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. These are all things that you should be doing. Come now. Are you going to work up to? Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it, right? Now getting to the renewed stage. Isaiah 1 verse 23. I'm going to jump into verse 24. It says, Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies, and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tens. So the Most High is going to get rid of all the wicked Israelites who he calls his enemies, the two-thirds. Then, listen, and I will restore you hear that? Going back to what we were reading. Renovate, restore, and I will restore thy judges as at the first. You're going to be back like King David. It's King Solomon in your power, but you're going to be in a new body. That comes later. You know, I shouldn't even mention it because in lessons like these, we trying to pattern it for the new believers. They may not understand that, but y'all brothers know it. You're going to be back in your power and your glory, but with a new powerful body, a renovation as it is, Right? You get a brand new suit of clothes. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. So you go on the path with Enoch and Elijah, who was beamed up also, never died, right? With Lot, with Noah. Daniel, Job, Joseph, Moses, you on that path. That's who you start to resemble. You resemble Yahweh Shai even, which, which you ain't going to never be able to be as, you know, as righteous as he was. But I'm just saying, you know, because what did Romans 8, 29 say? It said you being conformed to his image. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness and the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. So there's only two options here. Either you're going to repent or you're going to be destroyed. As we've been constantly pushing that. The most I got us speaking that. So now we went back. Let's go back to Ephesians where we were. So you know what renewed means. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on and, and put and that ye put on the new man, which is after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. Oh, you got to go. I got to go down. It says. Ephesians 4, 28. Let him that stole steal no more. 
but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may give to him that have need. Or, I'm sorry, that he may give to him that needeth. If you used to make a good living boosting clothes and then reselling them, man, I got all these cell phones. I mean, you know, I got the hookup. You take old phones, you steal them, and you go sell them. You got to hook up with a guy who can put up, you hook up cables some kind of way. You can charge people. You can't do that shit no more, man. You got to give that up. Find your ass a regular job. Go on down there to the factory. Get you a nine to five. Work the job, man. Your bad habits, you should put away bad habits so your money should start to stack up. Even if you just get you a regular apartment, right? Have a meager life, an austere life. You don't need to be flossing, doing all that shit. If the most high give you more, great. But if he don't, take what he gave you. Be happy with what you got. It's a safe life. Trust me, I know. It's a safe life. Now, at the end, the most I'm going to look out for is me. And he's going to give you more than you, than, you, than you bargained for. But let him give it to you, man. Don't try to do it yourself. Now we hit the comment board. I'm going to go backwards. This is, man, y'all killing it. GMS Saints of the Most High. I'm going to start at Quadar Gabar, Jeremiah 17 and 30. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all the forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be ridden in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. You're going to be out of here. If you, if you put the Lord to the side, you ain't going to make it. GMS Saints of the Most High, Ezekiel 18, 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart, and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, said the Lord Power. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. You turn away from iniquity and to the Most High. Like it said in Ecclesiastes 17. That's what you do. Harakar Shalawar, Ezekiel 36, 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. You see that? The Lord going to do that. That's eventually when we in the kingdom, he's going to do that. That's what Ezekiel 36 is going into. But it still serves a purpose. Brother I'm Raya, 2nd Ezra 2 and 10. Thus said the Lord unto Ezra, tell my people that I will give unto them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Right? Their glory also will I take unto me. And give these the everlasting tabernacles which I have prepared for them. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Fire. And the brother said, rapper from Pretty Ricky just got shot. Yeah, that, he actually got shot yesterday, I believe. And maybe the day before that. Yeah. He laid up in critical condition. See? Thamayad 144. GMS Holland. Shalom. I believe that's brother from GMS Holland. Proverbs 6, 18, and heart that devises wicked imaginations. Salakia. Verse 16, these six things does the Lord hate. Yes, seven are the abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue. The most high hate liars, man. He don't like liars. Why do you need to tell lies? And we ain't talking about, don't get me wrong, you may have to deceive Esau when you go to work. You may have to ask for a day off for Passover. And you ain't going to tell him that. You're going to tell him whatever. It's not dealing with that. It's not dealing with the people of the world. The scriptures say use the world as not abusing it. Okay? So don't get extra technical about it. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. And a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift and running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that sowed discord among brethren. All these are things that the Lord hate, man. Raphael, Israel. And, don't, and you know, don't get mad if your real name is, is, is Andre. <laughs> don't get mad. All right? I was just saying. There's just names that came up. Ain't nothing wrong with the name Andre, okay? In reality, you know, you may have to be Andre around your family. And then, you know, you are, you know, brother... Uh, Brother Yashalom around the brothers, okay? Raphael, Israel, Revelation 2 and 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. So lock it. All right. Let me plug this thing up, too. Just hold on. It's charger.
There it is. And that's the juice. Radio Raheem. <laughs> okay, Raphael Israel, Revelation 2 and 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. That means the Lord going to take the truth from you, man. You got to do the first works. What's that? Going back to the original laws, statutes, commandments, walking after the ways of the Lord. Or he going to remove your candlestick. He going to take the fire out of you. The fire of truth, that Holy Spirit gonna be, that's burning on you now, he going to remove that, man. And you're going to be a two-third. You're going to be a two-third nigga. I'm going to just skip through some now. Um, beautiful stuff, though. Excellent, excellent, excellent work. So let's go back up. Um, read that. Read that one. Quadarga Bar, Psalms 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O power, and renew a right spirit within me. That's right. You want to be, you know, you want to be a righteous man. That's what you're striving to be. You don't want to be a... And by all means, stop walking around the earth referring to yourself as black. I'm black. That shit is getting more and more insulting as the days go by. Uh, with his deeds. And I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. We The point is made. We got our point across. I, it's another scripture I wanted to get, though, is this is Colossians 3 and 9. It says, lie not one to another, seeing you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. I got to read it again. Lie not one to another that ye put off the old man with it. And you know, I'm going to have to go up and read up because Jacob say, you, you skip that. Y'all be saying harsh language. Colossians 3 and 8. But now ye also put off all these. Anger. Stop right there. Don't the scripture say be ye angry and sin not? You have to apply balance. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, Filthy communication out of your mouth. What's the filthy communication out of your mouth? Saying what? It don't matter the name you call on the Lord. Right? That's filthy communication right there. False doctrine is filthy communication. Lie not one to another, seeing yet that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed. You a new man. In knowledge. After the image of him that created him fire if I do say so myself <laughs> inside joke then I got to read this Galatians this is Aunt brother I'm right y'all Galatians 5 19 now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery sin fornication spiritual fornication sin which is idolatry right uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. And a good study is to go into a scripture like that and look up those words. And you have to remember Esau do, does go off, okay? Excellent scriptures, brothers. I think I'm going to leave it right there. It's a good place to stop. That's fire. Beautiful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You know? Yeah. Um... I think I read that one. Ephesians 4.24, I did read that. I want to read one more. Uh, I 
Yeah, y'all killing it. Still, still. So this is Colossians 3 and 5. And it says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. When you mortify something, you put it, you put it to rest. Let me look up the word to get it more precisely. Mortify, right? And it, even the word shows you that. The word is that crew. Come on now. Hold on, brothers. The cow. Let me play it again. Strong's G, 3499, Necrao. Necrao. Necrao, which sounds like it's necrophilia or necros, which is, you know, concerning the dead. Necrao, to put to death, right? To deaden, to subdue, be dead, mortify. So you want to put the, you know, you want to put to death those former lusts. To make dead, to put to death, to slay. To deprive of power, destroy the strength of. So you mortify those deeds like smoking. After you quit smoking, it becomes dead to you. Don't give it strength again. You took the power away. The Most High, you, of course, the Most High had to help you. Right? He had to put the spirit on you. Colossians 3 and 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of the Most High cometh on the children of disobedience. There you go. See? Into which ye also walk sometimes when ye live in them, but you no longer live in them. I'll, one more. And I think we, we covered it pretty well, you know. Started out slow, but we covered it pretty well. First Peter 4, I'm going to start at verse 1. For as much then as Hamashiach has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he, should don't, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Whew. You see? So, when you change fully, people gonna look look at you like you're strange, man. You know? They're gonna be like, what's wrong with this guy? He would have jumped at that opportunity before, but now he just basically just walked off. Cause you ain't you're not turned on by the same things as you used to be when you was in the world, man. And you just gotta be a new creation. So Lord willing, this helped. I read this to close out. That's fire. GMS of Matthew Eyes. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Can't make it no plainer. See? Can't make it no plainer than that. Kodaga Bar, Deuteronomy 13 and 4, ye shall walk after the Lord your power and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. There you go. All right. There you go. So that's, that's it. This has been Hebrew Israelites. How do I repent? This should give you a lot of, you know, those that read this title that's new that's coming in. You read the title, you should know. Let me watch this. And we have many examples to go by. There's a lot of men thousand more scriptures okay thousand more scriptures that you can read read the commandments read the law you can look at the example of your the disciples you know great men of the lord anyway to watch everybody for joining in i enjoyed it let's go watch the dallas brothers now all right all praise to yahweh by hashem yahweh shai by hashem rakak wadash double honor to the apostles and elders the great millstone shalom to the hopefully elect see you again soon lord willing
Shalom.